Hi folks, Spuddy's back for another uh, webcast review. Okay, remember a few nights ago, I'm going to try to stay quiet and peaceful here and not quite so animated as I was on my last one talking about uh, Hatchet, which I thought was a terrible movie. A few nights ago we talked about Puppet Master 1 and Puppet Master 2. Tonight, and I told you, I bought in Blu-ray right here, see? He has one, two, and three. Tonight we're going to talk about the third movie, which I watched a few nights ago. Oh, I got to turn. Anyway, and I finally did watch this movie. It's called Turlock, Andre Turlock's Revenge. It's part three. The first three movies, basically. This is the third part in the, in the I think there's like about, about nine or ten of these movies out. So what happens here in this movie is that uh, it goes back to Nazi Germany and 19... You know, 40 or whatever, 45 or whatever it is. You know, something that when when Germany's losing the war, so they're really having a tough time. Germany, uh, Nazis and stuff. So they have a scientist called. Well, his name is uh, Ian Abercrombie. You all rec recognize him from a ton of movies. Good actor, British actor. He's been in tons of movies. He portrays a scientist that is uh, helping Nazis reanimate their dead soldiers so they become super soldier. Doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> like, <laughs> you've seen that in many, uh, many movies in recent years, in the last 10, 20 years. So he's really close to reanimating uh, the dead Nazi soldiers and make them to super soldiers and stuff like that. You know, and uh, so he's uh, he's got them actually reanimated. And they're up and, you know, jumping off the table, but they're, they're completely crazed and they're, they're useless, basically, because they, they can't focus on what they're doing. All they want to do is just kill anybody that's right next to them or, you know, they just want to slaughter. I don't know if they're really zombies or anything, but they're all bloody and, you know, chunks ripped out of them and stuff like that. And, uh, boy, this is useless. This rain is really freaking me out tonight. Anyway, Richard Lynch portrays uh, the head of Gestapo. I think you've seen him in tons and tons of movies. You know, he's a good actor. You recognize his face instantly. And anyway, he uh, he actually uh, commands Ian uh, Abercrombie. You know, trying to get him going. And then I think there's uh, Walter Gautel or something. He's been uh, he's a British actor. He's been in tons of movies. Whatever. You recognize him. He plays a general. That's actually trying to get uh, this program, uh, you know, going and everything. So, because not, Germany's losing the war. So, you know, they're trying anything. They're desperate, basically. And uh, to try anything to keep their soldiers up and running, you know, make them super soldiers. Kind of like Universal Soldiers. Remember those movies back in the 90s and stuff like that with, uh, oh, I don't know, what's that guy's name? <laughs> the Muscle Dude. <laughs> you know? And Dolph Lundgren was in those movies, too. And so... And, he, and there's basically, you know what, what really creeps me out about this movie, there's a driver that works for Richard Lynch, you know, his personal driver. He basically sees Andre Tulloch doing a puppet show in the park or something like that, or on a street corner. And he's, he can't figure out why these puppets are moving without their, without any strings attached. And so he goes to visit, after the puppet show, he goes to visit uh, uh, Guy Rolf, who plays Andre Tulloch. And, uh, boy, this rain is really pouring like cats. Oh, my God, listen to that. Can you hear that, folks? That's really nasty. It is pouring here in Minneapolis. So he goes to visit <laughs> oh, Andre and his wife, Sarah Douglas, portrays his wife. Remember her from Superman uh, 2 and some of those other movies in the last 20, 30 years? And he wants to figure out why these puppets are moving without any strings and stuff. And of course, Guy Rolf or Andre Tulak refuses to tell him the secret. Of course. A magician never tells the secrets, right? That's the way it is. You know? Even though it's, it may all be phony or whatever it may be, you, you never reveal your secrets and give your, uh, your methods away. So he goes back. Well, actually what happens is he leaves, of course, without any information. And uh, so he uh, sneaks up in some outside one of their windows to takes photographs, and he actually sees these puppet puppets moving around inside the studio with Andre and his wife. So he goes back to Richard Lynch, the head of the Gestapo, and tells him exactly what is going on. And of course, Richard Lynch wants to get the secret. 
And of course, he tells Ian I'm Abercrombie, you know, the head scientist of their Nazi zombie program, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and of course, uh, Richard Lynch and a bunch of Gestapo soldiers or, you know, German soldiers go visit Andre L L <laughs> whatever. <laughs> of course, they, he refuses to give the secret away and he refuses to help them because he doesn't believe in the Nazi cause and that kind of stuff. Of course, they end up shooting his wife, Sarah Douglas, and she dies. Of course, they take him back to Gestapo headquarters, and they basically, uh, later on, you re I think, I kind of lost track of this movie. He kind of escapes, and he goes back to his studio, with the help of his puppets, of course. And he reanimates his wife into a, uh, the leech woman. That's, that's who becomes, she becomes the leech woman. So, of course, she, he's devastated. You know, he lost his love of his life and everything. Uh, Sarah Douglas is, I can't remember what her name was in this movie, but it's kind of a sad situation. Of course, he wants total revenge against Richard Lynch and the little uh, Gestapo driver and stuff. And the, the, basically, the uh, the Nazi soldiers. He, he just wants to declare war, declare war on all these uh, uh, Nazis because they're hated over there, you know. And uh, so, he reanimates his wife. He... He puts a, you know, he turns her into the leech woman, and she's been in lots of all the other movies, so you know exactly what I'm talking about, the leech woman. She's nasty. Of course, that's his wife. You know, her spirit is inside the doll, like all the other spirits are inside of all of his other puppets, like, you know, Conehead and the Six Shooter and, uh, you know, and uh, the Muscle Dude. I can't, Pinhead and, uh, you know, the other ones. I have to watch the rest of the movies before I get the names of everybody. But I reviewed the first two movies, and I thought the puppets were pretty cool, you know. But I thought the movies were, the first two at least, were a little on the slow, boring side. But this movie, I think, is a little bit better than the third installment here. I think it's a little bit better. Anyway, so... He tells all his puppets to go out and kill all these people. And, of course, they slowly kill all these people. Of course, the general, I can't, I can't think of the guy's name. He's been in a lot of movies. You'll recognize his face, too. He's the head of uh, the Nazi program, and he wants to... Of course, he's the Richard Lynch's boss. He's Ian uh, Abercrombie's boss, and he, he wants some kind of results. And so they kill him, one of the first people they kill. Of course, Six Shooter just blows his ass right out of his like a second, third story window, you know, shoots him six or seven times. And, you know, so, so they basically go after every one of the, they go after Richard Lynch and they go after all the rest of the Nazi uh, soldiers and stuff. You know, if they want total revenge, Andre Lulak, whatever. And so they keep going after uh, all the Nazi soldiers because they want total revenge, like I just said. Yeah, I just said. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't have drank. I should have drank before I did this review. It's pretty sad, isn't it? <laughs> I think I'm doing a pretty good job, though. You know, I, I'm not fumbling my words too bad, am I? I don't think so. I am looking. Look at. I got Pennywise's glasses on. Pretty cool, huh? And I'm looking tough. Ah, let's take these glasses off. I just look stupid. It'll just upset Pennywise anyway. He's in a hospital, as you all know. So as the movie goes along, they start to gradually kill all the soldiers. And they, of course, they get to uh, Richard Lynch kind of towards the end and stuff. They know they really just brutalize him completely. They, they put all these hooks in him. They string him up on the, like, halfway up on the, you know, up towards the ceiling. He's got hooks in his arm. He kind of looks like a puppet. <laughs> you know, and he's just screaming for his life. You know, he's bleeding from his arms, his legs, and stuff like that. And, you know, he's 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 basically getting his ass killed. You know, <laughs> that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool scene. I like that scene a lot. I like that scene a lot. He gets exactly what he deserves. <laughs> you know, he's Richard Litch plays a com completely total scumbag head of Nazi Gestapo. Oh my God, this guy! You just want to shoot him in the head when he after the shit he does, man. He has no emotions, no feelings. He has absolutely no love for uh, anybody except for the Nazi cause, you know. And uh, oh, oh God, it's horrible. <laughs> You know, it's filmed pretty decently. It, I'm not saying this is a great movie. It's not a great movie, but it's better than the first two movies. It has some 
better elements. It's a little more faster paced. The characters are a little bit more interesting because it's more of a story, I believe, than the first two movies. Even though they, those were stories, but you know, I think this one kind of strikes home with a lot of people because of the World War II element here. And ah, uh, uh, but the movie is about eighty-five minutes long. It's a typical full moon, full full moon features uh, length type movie. Oh, how long are we into this movie? Oh my god, we're only 10 minutes in this movie. I am, you know, I should, I'm babbling too fast. You know, I, earlier tonight I had some, one of these drinks here. I don't know why I should be, red. it's like, it's got 8.0% alcohol, whatever. <laughs> I can tell I'm just a little lightheaded, but, you know, I think I'm doing a pretty good job. Uh... You know, like I said, I haven't seen the other Puppet Master movies. I believe there's been like maybe around nine or ten now. Maybe nine. I've only really seen the first three, you know. But this is my take on it, you know. I, I do plan on getting uh, all the rest of the Puppet Master movies because I think they're worth having in your collection. I like the idea of, you know, dolls attacking people, dolls coming alive, puppets, stuff like that, you know. Uh, uh, you know, dummies, stuff like that. You know, I think that's actually a pretty cool idea for movies. I know a lot of people get freaked. I like clowns, too. A lot of people get freaked out over stuff like this, but I kind of like this stuff. It's the kind of stuff where you, you know, you'd be laying in bed some night, then, you know, there's a rocking chair in the corner of your bedroom, and there's a puppet, or there's, a, like, a doll sitting in there just staring at you. You know, it's just giving you, you know, you're kind of thinking, is this thing really alive, or is this thing just, you know, just a basic stuffed doll doing nothing, you know, with no feelings, no no mind or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's just kind of one of those creepy things. Remember Poltergeist, uh, was it the second movie or the first movie where the kid is, <laughs> the doll sort of drags him under the bed, you know, wraps around his neck and drags him down off the bed, under the bed, you know, off the bed and under the bed. It's, stuff like that, just, I love stuff like that. It just makes me, you know, I have a lot of stuff around this, uh, studio that kind of reminds people of this kind of a creepiness and this kind of a, a scary thing in your from your childhood you know I love clowns too like I just mentioned I love puppets I love uh, dolls and stuff like that and these kind of movies are just so cool I love these kind of movies you know there's a lot of dogs out there in movies there are a lot of bad uh, renditions of these type of movies but there's a lot of good movies too I kind of like you know he has a lot Charles Band anyway you know he he is full moon pictures, you know, he's the producer, director, stuff like that. Of course, he works with other people, you know, in his movies. He's got about maybe, God, I bet this guy's got at least 30, 40 movies out, man, under the full moon features uh, production company. And, uh, you know, I think I'm going to get all of his movies because I kind of like, like I said just a minute ago, I kind of like the idea of all this kind of stuff just coming to life and attacking people or either being your friend or attacking you, you know, stuff like that. Remember the movie? Oh, God, I'm just babbling on so much here. Because I'm, I'm really excited tonight. <laughs> Remember the movie from the 80s called Dolls? Another one of Charles Band's early, early movies? That was one of my favorite movies of all time. I actually have that on DVD. You know, where this old couple... Uh, Guy Rolf is in that movie, too. And I can't remember who portrays his wife in that movie. But they played this old warlock and witch couple that basically draw people into their giant mansion and of course they determine if uh, they're good or bad and then if they're bad of course they turn them into little dolls you know which is kind of cool which are all live so they have hundreds of dolls in this house you know if you're good they let you go at the end you know and of course because you consider you to be a friend of the dolls see you, you better like dolls you better not kick your dolls around or your puppets around and stuff like that because you never know they could be alive <laughs> That's a classic movie. That movie I would probably give probably about an eight or a nine. The the dolls movie from the like mid late eighties or something like that. I should be talking about that movie. Anyway, what were we talking about? We were talking about Two Locks Revenge. Andre Two Locks Revenge. So let's rate this movie right now. You know, the first two, I think I gave something like a five or something like that, or five and a half. I'm going to give this one a little bit higher revenge. Uh, revenge. A little higher rating. I'm going to give this one about a six and a half because I think it's a slight improvement over number one and number two. 
And I just like the idea of Nazi Germany and stuff like that, and him fighting against him and his puppets fighting against the uh, uh, Nazi, you know, Nazi Germany and the soldiers and the, you know, the Gestapo and uh, the SS and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's kind of like a cool idea. Uh, there's the cover. I think you've seen this a few nights ago. I don't know if you can see with all this reflection. There it is, right there. It's stupid like this. Right there. Pretty cool, huh? Not really. This is the Blue Ray version, of course. You know, it has a lot of familiar faces in uh, Andre uh, uh, Andre Tulak's Revenge, Part 3. I think you recognize everybody, or at least the main cast, you know, stuff like that. Oh, man. I feel so good tonight, man. I don't have to work tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm looking good. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my God. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Ah. Anyway, we're going to give this a... What did I just say? We're going to give this a six and a half. Oh, no, how about a six? Well, uh, five and a half for the first two. We're going to give this one a six. Let's give it a six and a half to be really fair. And, uh, you know, I want... This is the... Like I said, this is a little better than part one than part two. It, better than part one or part two. I got to learn how to speak better. At least I'm not saying basically as much, remember? You know, a couple nights ago, I talked about uh, the movie Hatchet, which I thought was absolutely kind of terrible. <laughs> you know, it had so many cliches and everything, and those people were so stupid, they deserved to die. <laughs> but we're not going to be talking. We should be talking about that. We should be talking about Part 3. Anyway, uh, I like this movie. I like Part 3. I'm going to get Part 4, Part 5, and, you know, so forth and all the way up to the to the current one because I want to see if these improve slightly, if they're, you know, I think they are, they're getting better. Just remember, just like when I talked about the Killjoy movies, the first Killjoy was okay. Then it got better as we hit Part 2, Part 3, and Part 4. And, of course, I told you that uh, Killjoy Psycho Circus is coming out next year. Oh, I can't wait for that, man. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, let's take a look at my studio. Let's just tilt up this camera. We got Michael Myers back there. See him back there? He's been hitting uh, hit that he wants to come back and do another uh, movie review, but I don't know. He looks good as bodyguard back there. I think we got all this creepy stuff up there. Look at that. Ooh. Spiders and cobwebs and creepy dolls in the background and stuff like that. Oh my god. We're at like almost 18 minutes into this review. Not bad. I've been trying to make these reviews a little bit shorter in length because I'm noticing a lot of people don't want to sit for 25, 30 minutes to listen to an idiot like myself blab about movies. You know, they, they want to watch a quick little review and be done, you know. And so we're going to try to keep these under 20 minutes at least for the time being, you know. And just to make everybody feel more comfortable, like they feel like they can watch them and stuff like that, you know, without... Uh, uh, without, you know, falling asleep and, you know, being bored out of their gourd. Bored out of their gourd. Oh, my God. Oh. What else can we do here? Oh, my God. I don't know what else we can do. I don't know. So, anyway. Six and a half for part three. Andre Tulak's Revenge. And, uh... You know, I hope... I think he's going to be releasing all these movies on Blu-ray. All of his movies from Full Moon Features. Which is kind of a good idea. Not that they're going to look much better than the conventional DVDs, but at least uh, they might have a little bit more, you know, 1080p uh, uh, resolution, high definition uh, rev resolution. Do <laughs> oh. oh, let's go back a little bit. Let's just check this out, man. Oh my God, what do you think, ladies? Pretty good. Look at this. What do you? Th Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, six and a half for this movie. You know, I think I'm doing pretty good on this uh, movie review, considering I'm uh, kind of drunk. <laughs> oh, but I'm, you got to admit I'm pretty damn cute. <laughs> oh, like I said, you know, I told you a few nights ago that I'm kind of take more control of this webcast because I felt like. The other members were just going off in all weird directions. You know, Pennywise was complaining. You know, he was whining all the time. Michael Myers was, he wasn't too bad. Leatherface is basically promoting his own line of meats. In fact, he's got a, wait till you see his next review. You people are going to gag. 
He's already starting his packaging process for his new meats to go into supermarkets and stuff. Wait till you see this stuff. Make sure you go to every supermarket and look for his, his uh, product line. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I think we're pretty much done with this review tonight. And, uh, you know, if you have any comments and stuff like that, rain, rain, rain. You guys like this uh, thundering, crackling thunder, rain in the background? Because it's always raining here in Minneapolis, and I'm, you know, I'm, I always have to go out and save, uh, you know, save the city and everything. I'm basically getting soaking wet, you know, so I could protect you people, you people. I'm very under underappreciated, don't you think? I think so. Anyway, so we're going to end this review, and tell me what you think in the comment boxes below, below. You know, once I post this on YouTube and stuff like that, or Facebook or whatever, and tell me if you think my review is fairly right or wrong, or if you agree with it, or you think I'm a total wacko. I know a lot of you are going to think I'm a total wacko, but I'm not really a wacko. I'm just, I'm just a fun guy who likes to save uh, the city from villains. That's me, you know. So, <laughs> oh, I feel really good tonight. Oh my God, and I'm just looking good. Oh my God, look at this. <laughs> well, of course, uh, we're going to post our... Uh, one thing we did mention a few nights ago, we're going to be recruiting some new webcast members. You know, if you have costumes and stuff that you think you might be interested in, you know, costumes with collecting dust in your closet, stuff like you're more than welcome to join our webcast here and come and be part of this uh, historic webcast of movies, you know, along with me and the rest of the cast. So we'll post the email information below in the comment box and the phone number and stuff. If you're interested in getting involved, we just have a fun time here, folks. Don't take this too seriously, you know. We joke around, we make fun of, fun of ourselves and stuff like that, and we basically just uh, have a good time. That's all we're having is a good time. You know, some people hate us, but, you know, that's tough shit. <laughs> so, uh, next time, until next time, folks, remember, check these movies out. So, I think in the next couple nights, we're going to be doing some new reviews. So, uh, we got some new movies coming in from uh, my uh, distributors and stuff. So, I think we got, uh, I don't know, what do we got coming in here? We got the Ice Cream Man. Remember the Ice Cream Man with... Uh, uh, Clint Howard, the uh, Ronnie Howard's uh, brother, <laughs> and stuff like that. We got all kinds of cool movies coming in. We're going to review them all. We're going to all give them the benefit of the doubt, and we're just going to try to tell people about these particular movies and if they're worth watching or adding to your collection, stuff like that. You know, so watch for some surprises coming in here really soon. So, you know, until then, you people behave yourself, behave yourself, and uh, please get involved. So we'll talk to you guys later. Later.